Praise the Pirate Lord, because today is a wonderful day. This day marks the release of the second Sea of Thieves novel written by Chris Alcock, Heart of Fire. And guess what? I already read it and I'm going to give my spoiler-free review. And when I say spoiler-free, I mean a minimum of spoilers. It's hard to make a video without telling anything, so I will be talking about the setting, what emotions I felt, if the story was exciting, if I felt disappointed by certain aspects, and I might even give some vague examples. But I won't be giving away any plot points, any specific revelations or names of new characters. However, some might feel even this spoils too much, and I totally understand that. So if you just want to know if you should buy the novel, the answer is yes. Just like the previous novel, it enhances the game, we get some nice reveals, and all of this at a very affordable price. Um, it, it's just how it is. I'm also sure a lot of content creators all over YouTube will be making tons of videos about this novel after they read it. Well, maybe not everyone, but at least Falkor, A Shiny Ray, and Captain Logan will. So if you want to have a bigger understanding of these future discussions, you really should read this novel. So before we go into my thoughts and opinions, I want to give a big shout out to Titan Books for sending me the novel in advance and making me feel like a real YouTuber. Like honestly, I'm not even a CFP's partner, but I was trusted with an advanced copy. So thanks Titan Books, you guys rock. So onto the review, and let's get some basic information out of the way. Just like the previous novel, this one is written by Chris Alcock. And not only is this guy well known in the Sea of Thieves community, he is also really supportive of a lot of their older IPs, which I obviously approve of. He's written the story for Cameo and is also credited as the writer for the upcoming Battletoads art book, which I will probably also get. Similar to Athena's Fortune, this novel features multiple POV characters, both old and new, but we mainly follow the adventures of two different crews. In Athena's Fortune, this was Ramsey's crew and Lorena's crew, in Heart of Fire, it is the crew of the Morningstar, and another crew of a galleon I won't name. However, most of this story is focused on these two teams trying to outfight and outwit each other and I thought this aspect of the novel was very well realized. Unlike Athena's fortune, which was split between two eras, most of this story takes place in the same period 8 years before the events of the Seabound Soul. During this time, Flameheart was at the height of his power and together with his Ashen Lords, he was threatening the freedom on the Sea of Thieves. And I love this setting. We heard so much about Flameheart's previous reign and him bringing the seas to its knees, but we haven't seen it yet. And now we can visit that period thanks to this novel. And because you get the story of two crews, you also get to hear different arguments of why people are fighting for or against Flameheart. And a lot of these arguments put me right back in the comment sections of all those Lost Sense videos where people were using their best reasoning to choose a side. And honestly, I feel this book will make sure those discussions will light up again. And I might be biased, but I didn't think the arguments for choosing to fight with Flameheart were really strong in this novel. But you know, I'm pretty sure a Shiny Ray will say something different in his review. And it will sound cliche, but this story makes you feel like you are playing the game. And, and yeah, that does sound lame, but it's really how it is. It does feel like you are part of a crew choosing to do this massive tall tale, and yeah, I like that. And even though most of the adventure takes place within the Sea of Thieves, we do get to see some new locations. I won't spoil what it is, but I would love to be able to visit these locations in the actual game. And speaking about the novel feeling like a huge tall tale, it also gives us a lot of context for previous adventures. And I am looking forward to completing some of those older tall tales again with a new perspective. And now with the new milestone system, this seems like a great time to dive back in. I also had a lot of questions about the Seabound Soul tall tale, and without spoiling too much, I can reveal that I was satisfied with some of the answers this novel has given me. But I do have one complaint. Just one, but it did step out. 
the back cover of the novel reads, plunge into the thrilling origin story of the skeleton lord, Captain Flameheart. And we do get some of that, but not enough for me to call this a Flameheart origin story. So if you expect to have all your burning questions answered, just make sure to adjust your expectations. And I'm not saying we don't get Flameheart at all, because we do, but he's more a presence during most of the story. We do get some screen time with him, and when we do, it's really amazing. But considering both his face and his flagship are on the cover, I would have liked to see a bit more of him. Going into the story, I thought it would be more about the Morningstar versus the Burning Blade, but it's more about the crew of the Morningstar and the crew of that other galleon. So even though we get some reveals about Flameheart, I wouldn't consider this his origin story. And that's also what I wrote in my Goodreads review. Could have used a bit more Flameheart, otherwise pretty good. 4 stars. And I actually do have a Goodreads account, so for those two people that want to follow me, I'm also called Captain Blubber on that website, so if you want, you can do that. And speaking about origin stories, we do get another one. And when I read this, it was one of those holy shit moments where I was not just thinking it, but also saying it aloud. And I love it when novels can give me that reaction. Obviously, I won't spoil exactly what it was, but I was lying awake thinking about this other character a lot more than I did about Flameheart when I finished this novel. But I won't say more. So how does this story compare to Athena's Fortune? Well, I think it's better, but I'm also having trouble describing why. I do believe a big part of it is that I knew what to expect. When I first read Athena's Fortune, I was imagining real people going on a pirate adventure, but that's the wrong mindset. Having seen all those cinematic trailers these past years, I feel it's better to imagine how these characters look and behave as they do there. And to be honest, I think you are meant to do that. It's a video game novel, and you will have the best experience when you accept that. Also, I might like this novel more, because I'm more into the lore now than when I first started YouTube. I mean, some people see me as a lore guy, and I guess I have become one, so I try to be a good one. And being aware of the lore does help when reading the novel. So, should you buy this book? Yes, of course. Just like Athena's Fortune, the best part about it is that it enhances the game and gives you context for a lot of the stories and characters. Not only this, but I'm pretty sure this novel gives us plenty of hints to future content and hey, it's just fun to speculate. You also get some nice raw reveals and for that price, it's a steal. And if you haven't read Athena's Fortune, you know, buy that as well. Just remember that they don't match in size, which annoys me more than I'm letting on right now. And on a more personal note, I just wanted to say that reading this book before its release was a great experience. And not just for the obvious reasons, but reading is also like my second hobby, and I have never thought I'd be able to actually read a book before its official release. It just feels really special to me. So hopefully you enjoyed this video I made about it. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Go buy the book, um, your life will be better for it. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.